What's up guys, I'm Dan. Welcome back to Poor Michigan Reviews. If you could, drop a like guys, it really helps the channel out. Trying to get this channel up to a thousand subs. We'll see if that happens. If not, it's okay guys. I appreciate you watching my hobby. I'm nobody special, but I do appreciate all the love and support I've been getting for this channel, guys. It's for fun at the end of the day. Uh, I won't quit my day job, okay? So anyways, I got a pretty cool one for you guys. This is gonna be the Bells Bourbon Barrel Aged Arabicadabra, guys. I've always had the Arabicadabra uh, year to year, but actually this last year, I guess I'm lying, I did not have it this last year, but it's one of my favorite coffee uh, beers or milk stouts, if you will, because I just really love coffee. Like I'm a coffee fanatic, guys. I drink it every single morning, a few times uh, a morning sometimes, and actually in the afternoon as well. So I'm just a freak for coffee. So anything with that adjunct in it, I really tend to like it uh, quite uh, usually. So guys, I got this when I was down in Indiana for my buddy Nick's bachelor party. Shout out Nick Blinder. Um, and he's getting married this weekend. So guys, uh, congratulations to Nick. And he's one of my best friends from childhood who is tying the knot. So uh, congratulations, Nick and Courtney. But uh, Bell's Bourbon Barrel Aged uh, Rabicadabra, I got at Bell's Eccentric Cafe with uh, one of my buddies when I was heading back home to Sutton's Bay Guys. So stopped there, saw what that was all about, got a couple beers, and I saw this one was on the list for specialty beers you could buy to go. So I did pick this up, and I think it was around $23 or $24, so not cheap, okay? Not cheap for a 750 milliliter. But guys, when I see something rare, I usually snag it. I don't think many of these were produced. So on the back, we have a little Brewer's Magic Transforms. Locally roasted uh, Arabica beans and a variety of specialty malts into a creamy, intense coffee stout. This variation uses fresh coffee for flavor. Barrel aging adds notes of vanilla and touch of spice on top of oak. Enjoy this very limited release before it disappears. This was packaged on 61720, guys, and today is obviously May 13th, 2021. So this is not fresh, but I have a feeling this will still be good. Maybe the coffee is faded. I'm not quite sure. I guess we're going to crack into this one today, guys. Um, it says the shelf life is unlimited, and this is coming in at 8.4%. I'm happy. Let's go. Great carb off the top. Uh, and I've been quite busy, guys, so just a shout out to tell you why I've been busy real quick. This is a bonus feature of the beer review. Welcome to the beer family. This is my little boy, Knox, the English Black Lab. So I've been quite busy, and he has joined my family. So you expect to see this guy on my Instagram a lot, and expect to see him uh, on the YouTube channel from time to time. I might include him in a couple beer reviews, guys. So say hi to Knox for me. Drop a comment below. Uh, let's go to a pour. Okay, so this is not jet black. It's got definitely a dark brownish, uh, reddish amber hue to it. But really, guys, it's not jet black. It's not going to be that oily midnight darkness in a glass. It's more of that dark brown hue to it. Uh, a little bit of an off white tannish head that seems to be fading quite quickly. Again, this is barrel aged, guys. Uh, that head is pretty gone, or pretty much gone, and there's just a little ring left behind. But in the glass, in the camera, it looks like darkness, right? It looks like uh, a black stout, if you will. So let's check out what this milk stout has to offer on the nose, guys. Yep, yep. Fresh ground, black coffee. Awesome, awesome. Smells like a specialty coffee too. There's like there is like a touch of like hazelnut or vanilla in there uh, to complement the coffee well. Maybe a little bit of like very, very dark chocolate uh, on that undertone there, just kind of sitting underneath the coffee. Some roasted malts. Maybe some molasses, kind of oaky, dashy uh, smokiness. Not really. It's more just coffee, guys. Big, big coffee hue on this. Let's go to a cheers. It's the Bell's Bourbon Barrel Aged Arabicadabra. It's fire. It's fire. It's quite thin, but I think Arabicadabra always was. I don't think this was intended to be like a bourbon barrel aged stout, because it's not. 
it's a milk style, guys. At the end of the day, it's a little bit of that vanilla lactose thing underneath. Quite smooth. A little bit of alcohol uh, comes through, but let me get a couple more sips, let my palate adjust. Still quite creamy. Milky kind of uh, uh, creaminess to it that just adds a, a nice little level of complexity uh, to that coffee. It's very nice. It almost comes across as like vanilla creamer, honestly. Like it's got that kind of morning vibe. This is awesome. I'd love to drink this in the morning, honestly, if I get away with that. Uh, the head's completely gone, guys. 100% gone. Um, there is a dash of alcohol to this. It's not warming because it's 8.4. I've had bigger uh, New England style beers, honestly, but the 8.4 isn't that noticeable, but you can tell there's a little bit of sharpness on the back end that comes in, but also it's kind of like the bitterness of the of the coffee playing with that uh, alcohol. So really you're kind of catching up to the bitterness of the coffee and the alcohol kind of sweet warmth as well. So it kind of goes together hand in hand there, guys. But very nice. It is it is thin, but drinkability is fantastic in this bourbon barrel H milk stout. The coffee's still intense, like very, very strong. And again, there's like a vanilla kind of slight oaky smokiness that, that kind of adds to the beer a little bit. Uh, dark chocolates are there, but very subtle. And I'd say it's a very... Uh, it's a very dark bitter chocolate mixed with uh, a milk chocolate chip in the same token. But again, that could be that milky kind of lactose thing adding to the chocolate as well, guys. So uh, I get both milk chocolates in this and dark chocolates. Uh, and it's very roasty too. There's a very nice roasty uh, bitterness on the back end that adds a very nice balanced drinking experience for an 8.4 milk stout that happens to be barrel aged. It's, it's, it's very nice guys. This beer just does it for me. Uh, I enjoy coffee though. So if you don't like coffee, this won't be for you. Um, but I bet you when this was fresh, the, the, the coffee presence was probably just souped up on steroids. I can't imagine what this was like fresh. I, over the years, I've learned that I actually enjoy coffee stouts or porters or whatever uh, fresh because I like that harsh dose of coffee straight to my dome, guys. I, I enjoy that uh, robust um, roasted coffee, if you will. I really just enjoy those qualities. And, that, and this is still bringing it to the table. It really is after how many months here? Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4... Five. So yeah, I'm, I'm done. This is pretty much almost a year out, guys. So I, I should have just done it on the year out anniversary, but I did not because I didn't think about it. I just thought, what a nice beer to share with you guys before it gets into summertime. Probably not going to want to drink this in the summer. You could. Still pretty drinkable at 8.4 and barrel aged, like I said, guys. Uh, that, that body isn't that thick. It, it, it's something you could still enjoy, honestly, any time of the year, but you have to be in the mood for it. I'm always in the mood for it. Yeah, it's fire, guys. Um, the barrel age, not there that much. I, I doubt this was barrel age for very long, but it's very good still. Uh, it gives me just the smallest notes of like expedition stout, the smallest uh, reminiscent qualities um, of your uh, black note. I mean, just ever so subtly. You can tell it's the same brewing uh, process that kind of went into this. Uh, they, they know what they're doing, but obviously it's a different genre of beer. It's not the same category. So, uh, guys, this does remind me of Arabicadabra and then some uh, a little souped up on that barrel age process. So, very, very good stuff here. I'm always in the mood for this. And now I'm rambling, so I'm going to go to a rating, guys. This is going to be a... Four point three out of five. Uh, just suits me, guys. You could say, why isn't it thicker? Why isn't it this? Why isn't it that? It's lacking complexities. It, I don't think this was supposed to be too complex, but it still brings quite a few different layers to the table um, to an already awesome milk stout and abracadabra. So, guys, yeah, 4.3 out of 5 for me. It's really good to get this one. If you could, sip it uh, while you can because I don't think there's very many of these left in inventory. And if you had it, let me know below, guys. What do you think? Do you like coffee? Do you not? 
If you don't, this wasn't the one for you. I'm Dan, guys. It's been another episode of Poor Michigan Reviews. I am over and out. Cheers, Poor Michigan.